What's up, baby? We back between the lines with Coach Stella. We here for our Week Five recap show. I'm here with the boss of Interviews Media, my brother Linnell Lewis, joining me tonight. What's up, bro? How you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, man. Before we get started, we want to send a shout out to Don C. He had to handle some business. He working on some stuff. Good luck, Don C. You know we love you, my boy. And everything Dan Rock, candle champion. You already know. So let's talk about our Week Five recap first, brother. Uh, we're gonna start at that Masters St. A game that you went down to. Before I ask you about your feelings about the game, we want to make sure we do a special shout out to our Ellie House player of the game, Maslin senior quarterback, Dewan Owens. Dewan was killing it on Friday night, the biggest game in the state. He was the difference on the field. 26 carries, 176 yards, another 50 yards passing, two touchdowns, big time player. So our Ellie House player of the game, Maslin senior quarterback, Dewan Owens. Let's start right there, bro. What you see from Dewan Friday night? Man, Dewan is a gamer, man. He a gamer. Um, the first play of the game, I like the way Coach Moore got him hit early. Right. He got him hit early, quarterback keeper. Little did we know he was going to run it 25 more times. Right, that, right, that, right. That, but, um, he was, you could tell he was up for the game. Mm. Um, he was up for the atmosphere. Mm. And um, we, got to, we got to talk to him the day before we went up to Nassau and talked to Coach Moore and and uh, the one, and you could tell that he one of those type of players. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, like he came over from Copley, mm -hmm. from Copley, uh, just for this type of environment. Type of environment and, yes, uh, he enjoyed it, man. And he, he uh, big time, big time player, man. Big time player, man. I'm gonna say it again. That was the number one game in the state of Ohio. You had the Division One number one ranked team in the state. Now you have the division two. Now at this point, they're division two number one ranked team. Last right. week they were number three. So pretty much in essence, you had the division one number one ranked team in the state and the division two number one ranked team in the state. I want to ask you something, Mel. How was that atmosphere, baby? What was that crowd like? What was that tension like? Uh, the, the referees, the, uh, the the breathing out the face masks, all of that. What was that environment like down there? The environment, the atmosphere. It was it was, it was probably Friday night lights at its finest. Mm -hmm. I mean, the tailgating. The, uh, so shout out to was ever DJing for Masslin. DJ was doing his thing. Oh, he had it turned okay, up. Okay, okay. Um, shout out to the DJ. Everybody who was somebody, as far as the uh, Masslin alumni came out, mm -hmm. you know, so you could tell that they uh, they serious about their football. They serious about their football. People was coming back in town. The, uh, so yeah, shout out to the staff at uh, Mass and also for rolling out the red carpet for interview. They had us a spot up in the press box. Right. And, uh, That's what's up. Shout out to Coach Moore and everybody, you yeah, know, with the yeah, Mass and Tiger football yeah, program. That that atmosphere, that atmosphere, along with all that orange and black, and uh, it was loud. Right. You know what I know it was. I know. That's why I kept telling you, have fun, bro. Enjoy. And that's hard for us to say. We warned guys. So, you know, Warren, Harding, Maslin, that's a big rivalry, but we grown. We give props with props due. We give respect with respect due. Maslin got one of the better football programs in the whole United States of America. So, I know that atmosphere was beautiful, man. And also, like, not being the result, you know what I'm saying? We, we love our home team and everything, but being there uh, from the journalist right. point of view, not being tied to the result, and just hoping to see a good game and right. didn't disappoint. So, shout out St. E's. And shout out uh the Master Tigers, man. They definitely they definitely made a night for everybody who came out to remember. Right. And, uh, and I love it, man. I, I wasn't there with you, but I, you know, I was doing my research and keeping posted on it. One of the big things for St. Ed's, I see that hurt them is their senior quarterback, Casey Bullock, was out. He committed to Davidson. Shout out to Casey, you're a big time football player. And I know that had to hurt the Eagles a little bit. I'm not saying they would have won with Casey Bullock either way, vice versa. I'm not saying anything, but Anytime you got a quarterback that's coming back from winning the state championship and you playing in the biggest game in the state of Ohio, it can't help. It can't help. And those those couple a couple throws, a couple first downs, mm -hmm. a couple um I remember one time, two times in particular, he had he had a number ten. He had him. He right had call, him right play, right, right call, right time. Right. Just jammed him up on the sideline. He couldn't quite bring it in. And then another time. With the young man Casey, number one for Saint right. he was just a little bit behind. Exactly, just a little bit behind him. Um, maybe he, you know, a young man probably could have still made the catch. But deep, deep in the fourth quarter against a team like Maslin, you gotta um, make some plays. Those are the plays that 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 you gotta have. You gotta make some plays. And, um, you know, one thing that did strike me at the end of the third quarter, the 
end of the third quarter. It might have been the last possession, four for one. Okay. And uh, St. Ed's definitely was in field goal range, and they decided to go for it, and Madison stopped them. Mm. And going into that made Madison put the ball going into the fourth quarter. With all the momentum. And with the momentum, the crowd, and um, the one, the one ran it. Took it over. They gave him the keys, man, and he drove. He literally ran it down. And then check this out. Not to fast forward too much, but right. how fitting he was number fifteen. They scored fifteen, and he recovered the onside kick. Sick. Ballers are ballers, man. They just make plays. So again, shout out to the one, baby. You did your thing. Shout out to the Master Tiger football program on a big time win. And still shout out to the St. Ed Eagles. They still one of the best football programs we got in the state of Ohio. Back to back state championship. Right. Looking for a three peak this year. So a game like that don't do nothing but help you. You can lose the game, but it still don't do nothing but help you. So again, shout out to those programs. Real quick, man, we just gonna talk about some quick games. I ain't even gonna ask you. I'm just gonna go quick right here, real quick. Mm-hmm. Shout out to South Range. They had a big time win at Struthers, 37-33. Uh, Struthers went up late, 33-30. South Range championship like drive. They're state championship team. Quarterback Tristan Toy. Shout out to Tristan. Led them boys down for the game, winning touchdown. So. Shout out to both programs, South Range, big time program, big time win on the road. I got a lot of love and respect for the Struthers program, so shout out to both programs. Uh, Cheney Canfield, Canfield got back in the dub column. Canfield needed it. Yeah, they, they, were, they were struggling, bro, and they wanted to still, even though they're not having their best year, I know they wanted to get that bad taste out of their mouth from Cheney being the only team that beat them last year. So mm-hmm. shout out to Canfield for getting back in the W column. I know Cheney going to be hungry. They at Warren this week. So, Warren, we y'all got to be ready because Chaney, them boys, going to come in and they going to want to get that bad taste out of their mouth. So, and they also got one of our better athletes we got in the area in junior, Matt Jones. And lastly, I don't know if you, I don't know if you've seen this, bro. Green at McKinley. So, Green was the team that beat South Range a couple weeks ago and snapped their regular season winning streak. Correct. Hopped out on Ken McKinley, bro, 27 7 at halftime. I've seen that. 27 7 at halftime. Keaton Rohde. Remember, he was our, our player of the game for our uh, Buena Vista game of the week. Bro, he threw five first-half interceptions. I'm going to say that again. He threw five first-half interceptions. That ain't to throw no dirt on Keaton Rohde. If anything, it's to praise him because, again, they won the game. I, I'm, 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 let me say this. I've been coach, I coached high school for a long time. A lot of people forget they're still teenagers. Mm-hmm. They're still at that point in their life where they're extra emotional, hormones, testosterone, and all that for them. For a high school kid to throw five first half interceptions, be able to go in the locker room, shout out to Coach Hall and the coaching staff for helping him, and regroup himself, come out and lead your team to a comeback win. And I ain't just speaking on Keaton Roby, I'm just speaking on him because he threw the first, he threw the right, five picks right, in the first half. Right, right. But that's a big time win for the Kent McKinley program, man. Absolutely. Because Green is a good team, man. And down, down 27 7 and a half. And, I, and uh, they were showing the score on the uh, Jumbo Tron at the last game. Yeah. We seen they were down. They were right. running like, oh man. Yeah. And the game progressed, and then when we see the final score, I'm like, but you know what? I really wasn't shocked. Man. Right. I wasn't shocked because you know why. Mm-hmm. And we go we get right. later on in the show. Right. Number twelve. Right. Number tw- <laughs> number twelve. N- number twelve. Nino. <laughs> Nino. Nino. Okay. Heel. So so heel. Um. He boogie. Yeah. He boogie. Yeah. He boogie. He, he a big time back, man. He you see why he got that Wisconsin offer, that Big Ten offer. And shout out to a running back. That's something I'm giving props to as far as the development of Cam McKinley. I don't know if you checked out the stat book. He had a, he had a, a running back. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Steven Thomas, baby. Six, 116 yards and a touchdown. So mm-hmm. Nino give you 117, two touchdowns. And your running back give you 116 and a touchdown. With Keaton Rohde, Dante McClellan. Keith Quincy, man, look, look out for the Kent McKinley Bulldogs, man, coming down that stretch into the playoffs, man. Absolutely. We got we got a chance to visit that program a few times this mm-hmm. year, and you can tell the atmosphere around the program. Coach Hall, the way he has those guys gel, yes, yeah. um, they like being around each other, yes, and they know the tradition that they're part of, and they carry it, and, and it, it, it's not hard to see coming back from right. being down early, right. quarterback. Facing adversity and uh, check it off. His two, his two running backs took it. Yeah, we got you. Yeah, they we leaned, leaned on the running game a little bit more. Remember week one? Yeah, twelve didn't play the first half and they linked on. 
Number one. Yep. So we're yep. exchanging the one. Shout out to Kansas City. And, and, and shout out to Coach Hall for the development, man, because you got a big time tailback. Now you develop another really good high school football player that can share the carries. Already got a good quarterback, two, three good over receiver. So shout out to Ken McKinley, Coach Hall. Y'all doing a great job, man. Shout out to the big boys. We ain't want to forget about y'all because none of that can happen without y'all. I don't care what team you're playing on. If you got a great defense, I bet you you got a great defensive line. If you got a great offense, I bet you got a great offensive line. And if you got a great team, I bet you got great trenches regardless. So shout out to them boys. All right, here we go. Moving forward, baby. Our Buna Vista game of the week for week six. Bruh, I'm calling this the Battle of Youngstown. I can dig it. I can dig it. We got the Ursuline Fighting Irish traveling to take on the Fish Falcons. Talk to me, bro. What you feel? Okay, so I got a question for you. Give it to me. If this was if this was rap music battle, right? Got you. Who would Ursuline be and who would Fitch be? As far as was, music art. What's crazy? This is a Tupac Biggie type, and this is why I say that. This is why I say that. Because they're really mirror images without being mirror images. So I'm just breaking down. Ursula, great skill, right? Mm -hmm. Fitch, great skill. I'm sorry, I ain't gonna start there. Let's start here. Ursula, great coaching staff. Fitch, great coaching staff. Check, check. Ursula, great quarterback. Fitch, great quarterback. Check, check. Ursula, great skill. Fitch, great skill. Ursuline, Division One players, Fitch, Division One players. So really, they're, they're kind of the same. So really, they're the same. So it's just what you like. It's really what you like. And I say that because Biggie and Tupac were really the same, meaning they were for the people. Right. They were just young, got caught up. And I ain't going to speak on it too much because I don't know all the backstories. Right, right. But they're one of the zone. They're both great. It's a matter of what you like. Right. And I don't know new school rappers like that, so I'm just staying in my area. So right. this is a Tupac Biggie rap battle. Three rounds, four in football, but three rounds. Let's see who we got. So tell me the most intriguing aspect of this game. What, what you looking at when you – Ursula and that Fitch. We done, been, we done been in a lot of games. We've seen Fitch up close. We've seen Ursula up close. We've been to Ursula's practices, been to Fitch practices. Tell me one thing you looking for. In Ailes' world, in Ailes' minds, what you, what's something you looking for for that big game on Friday? Uh, for Ursula, I want to I wanna see – if if Ursula, I, I still I don't still have I don't know we seen Ursula best ball yet. Gotcha. I, that's gotcha. and that's saying that's, I don't that's, think, that's scary. Yeah, right. so I, I'm not even sure we seen Ursula's best okay. ball yet. Okay, okay. You get what I'm yep. saying? Because um with those guys, just like we the early weeks, we was thinking EC Ferrell, EC Ferrell, yeah, Davis. Yeah. What about me? Right? Exactly. Like what, what, Shout out Tyron Davis. We interview him. That's coming out. Right. And Be and looking for that. Our interviews for the Buena Vista game of the week coming. Be looking for that. Talked about the quarterback. He playing lights out right now. Yeah. Shout out to the general, Jack Erickson. And, and he he loving it. Yeah. He loving it. Then, yeah. you know, two, three. Yeah. Mr. Princeton. Yeah. C-Lynch you know, TV. Shout out to C-Lynch. Right. Mr. 40-year plan. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Mr. 40-year 40, 40 plan. Mr. 40-year right. plan. And that's what he told us. He, oh, said, man. he said, I went with a 40-year plan instead of a four-year plan. So yeah, shout so, out to C. Lynch. So so seeing them guys. Oh, this, it, we'll get back to that. But again, on the fit side. Right. You know they got that dog, number nine. Papa, Sean Vaughn Jr. Nine. Shout out to the guy. And uh, we went. We just went and talked to them yesterday. Yep. And his guy is going to go for him. Yes. Yeah. They they just they gonna go for him. Yeah. And um they looking forward to the challenge to playing Ursuline. So, you know, like I said, I still I still don't think Ursuline has played the best ball. Right. But it's not because I just I think Friday night you're gonna see the best of both teams. Right. Um I would be more concerned with Fitch if they didn't have another game since that Iggy game. Right. Because that right. double overtime was suck a lot. Right. 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 And they got but, to go play somebody the next week, kind of blow them out, start some rest. I mean, rest some starters. So they ain't got to play the four quarters to kind of get their legs back. So, so I'm, I'm going to have to say the difference going to be Coach Parker versus Coach Rear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, hey, listen. If you ain't there Friday night, you know, 
Now, listen, if you're going to support your local team, we get it. But if you're just a fan of football, fan of high school football, you want to go watch two good teams, two good coaching staff, two good programs with a lot of good players on the field, and you live in Trimble, Mahoney County, you should probably be in the house. That's going to be a big time game. And the, you know why I say that? Talk to me. Because they both got galvanized armies. Yes. They both they both got teams that trust the coaching staff, mm. trust their quarterbacks, mm. which is the quarterback is the representation yep. of the coaching staff. So being that you're looking at two armies, yes. you're looking at two armies, two two people. We talked to uh, the uh, Davion, 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 Davion Pritchard. Shout out to Davion, Davion Pritchard, Pritchard, baby, big time corner going to pitch. Shout out to Davion. And, and he, he, they all, they, one thing they said is we got respect for him. Yeah, we got respect for him. And that always makes for great atmosphere, great, great game. atmosphere, great. I'm gonna game. tell you what I'm looking for. This is my thinking. You get two big teams pretty much evenly matched. I think the game gonna come down to this. Always the stuff I always say tackling, penalties, halftime adjustments. That's any game. Who's best players play better? When you get in big games like this, it's evenly matched. Both teams got Division One recruits. Both teams got all district, all region, all state type of players. So if you got ten big time players, I got ten big time players. Whose team gonna have seven eight guys play big time? And I guarantee you that team will win. I don't know what team is gonna be. We are gonna be there to find out. But that's what I'm looking at. That's my underlining. That's what my eye is looking at. Can I ask you a question? That you probably asking me anything. Taylor, so, Taylor, Devontae Taylor. Yep. He played this week. It's tough because, you know, it's like it's stuff you don't know unless you're in the walls with them every day, unless we at Earth every day. So I don't know. Okay. I, all I can say is this, bro, as a fan and as somebody who knows me personally and as a fan of his game, I'm hoping so. Taylor versus Pritchard. I'm, bro, I'm hoping so, bro. Taylor and Pritchard on the outside. Let me give it to you like this. If Devontae play, you got Pritchard versus Devontae, right? Then, I've been telling you this, bro, so you know it ain't a lie. I think they got the two quickest kids in the area, D.C. Farrell, Dan Evans, the third, right? right. Another storyline. I think right now they got it's the two best quarterbacks in the area, right? And then honestly, I'm not, I'm not gonna say the two best head coaches because I'm not gonna disrespect no coaches out there. But at this point, what programs has more positive momentum than them outside of Canfield and South Range? Of course, they won state championships. But you take away any teams who haven't won state championships in the area, it's like it ain't that. It's like that coach prime effect. People want to watch fish. People want to watch Ursula. People want to go to their games. The young kids in Youngstown want to go to their games. They want to dream to be the Sean Bond. They want to beat Jack the General. They want to beat DC Dan Evans the Third. They want to catch one hand balls like Devontae Taylor. It's kind of like that old feeling, you know. We had used to have a war. Right, right. I used to run home from school, go get my clothes on, looking at my grandparents. I'm ready to go watch Omar Pro. I'm ready to go watch Derek Beckwood. I'm ready to go watch Carl Diggs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I can't wait, bro. I'm excited. I'm excited so and me. shout out to both teams, both head coaches. Everybody was great to us this week, letting us come over and getting our interviews. Hospitality was great. Shout out to Coach Price, Mr. Price. We met at Fitch. He was a great Mr. dude, Price, man. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Mr. Price, man. So we excited and good luck to both teams, man. So moving to our next segment, baby, we're going to talk about our between the lines with Coach Stella Player of the Week. I wanted to keep it. I do a lot of research. I read a lot of clippings. I do a lot of research. But to me, anytime you got the number one game in the state of Ohio, right? Makes sense. Player, to, it got to be a player of the week come from that game. We already, we already blessed the one Owen. So shout out to the one again. But I got to give it to senior linebacker Dorian Pringle, baby. Number one, they held St. Ed's to a season low, fifty nine rush yards and thirteen points. Let that sink in. St. Ed's, number one team in the state of Ohio. They've been beating up all these big-time programs in the state. Maslin holds them to 13 points and 59 rush yards. So your defense played big time. Then you look at the stat line, 10 tackles, three TFLs, two sacks. As a linebacker, that's check, check, check. Only thing you can do is get a pick. But you can see from the momentum of the game and the stats, it wasn't a lot of throwing over the middle of the field and a lot of open gaps anyway. So I'm sure he was doing his job, getting good drops, closing off the middle of the field too. So shout out to Maslin senior linebacker Dorian Pringle. He's a Bowling Green commit. Scott Leffler, I know Scott, you got a good one coming down there to you. Be a big time player. 
Hey, well, tell me some stuff you seen from Dorian, number three, big time linebacker from that. Oh, yeah. um, he uh he deferred to running because he played running back. Yeah, too. He, running back he too. deferred to running to the one and he got downhill and he made some real big tackle for losses in the fourth quarter. Um that kept St. Ed's in third and long. Mm -hmm. That even even I know they hit one. Was it third, third and twenty four, fourth and twenty four, or something right. like that? They hit one of them, but even the fact that they kept having to go back, they had to, they had to get them third long and regular makes it tough. It makes that tough. type of defense. Team. And um, that those those big plays that he was making, blowing up the middle, mm -hmm. um, letting his is a quick guy string out the plays on right. the outside. Right. They command. They commanded the middle. They commanded the middle of the field. Well, like I said, in the fourth quarter, he blew some plays up that really, that really put St. Ed's back against the wall and made them, made them go for the knockout. Right. You, know, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. They, they made them have. They made them have to go for the. They knockout. had to had to show their hand. They had to go all right. out because you ain't gonna get against a massive defense. You ain't gonna get great opportunities all night. Right. So when you get them opportunities, it could be fourth quarter. You might not get this ball back. They got the Juan Owens running this thing down our throat. We in good position right now. We got to take our chance to go for the win. So again, shout out to Dorian Pringle, man, big time linebacker, going to Bowling Green. Keep doing your thing, Dorian. And then they had a big time game and a big time um, atmosphere. So another thing I want to say real quick: all the kids out that that consider themselves big time want to be a big time player. Mm -hmm. If you consider yourself a big time player, or you want to be a big time player, you must play big in big games and big moments. And that's, that's pretty much what you just said. Because you said he made some big tackles for loss, but the key was in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter when they counted. When because he, really, people ain't going to say it. A lot of teammates and coaches, when they get to that point in the moments, they looking. They looking at you. They done kind of did their part. We got you here. If it's a basketball theory, hey, bro, I done made four, five, threes. I done took a couple of charges, got some rebounds. <laughs> Take us home. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? So if you're a big-time player, in any sport, really, we're talking about football right now, but any sport, if it's a big-time game or a big-time moment, you must yeah, show up. Absolutely. And that don't mean you won't have a bad game because that'll happen, but just learn from it and understand why you didn't have a good game. But eight times out of ten, if it's a big game or a big moment, you got to show up and show out. So that's just a little tip I wanted to give to the kids out there. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and the intention that he played with from the linebacker position, you know, trusting his eyes, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Trust his guys and trust him to coach his game plan. And you know, shout out to Coach Moore, too, because you know, Coach Moore was putting up 50 in their last yep. three games, you know, and him devising that offensive plan, it was almost like a Urban Meyer Tebow. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember you said that. It was like it was like Urban Meyer Tebow, and the one was getting behind those big guys. And by the time he get to the second level, he he's not no small kid. Nah. He's not a six one two oh five. And he, you know, he gets a little bit of he gets a little bit of money. Right. So long arms and stiff That's arms. That's a tough tackle. Or tough tackle for the That's corner. A tough That's tackle. a tough tackle for the corner. And he kept getting to that second level. He can take a he can take a shot. Give a shot. And even it's, it's still high school, so even for your linebackers and safeties, like you said, you can him coming down here with my middle, he gets to that second level. Even if you're a good high school linebacker, that's yeah. a tough tackle. Absolutely. Because then when you get yourself geared up for the, for this big time uh, thug where he's going to try to run you over, he's swift enough to uh -uh, give you a one two, now you're around you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. again, shout out to the one man, big time player. Next, we're going to go to our Axe Coach Stella segment. You know what I mean? I'm going to let you introduce this one, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you get to ask this question to me, man. Shout out the player, what school we from, and then you can ask the question. Man. All right. The uh, Ask Coach Stella question of the day comes from Kamitra Lewis from Valley Christian. Shout out, Kamitra. What's Shout up, out, baby? Kamitra, man. Happy belated yeah, birthday. Happy birthday. You, you know it. Bezel. You know I'll it. I'll ask you later on. I'll bless your game, son. You heard me? Uh, but, you know, uh, the question is, what three tips, three tips can you give young, new wide receivers? Three tips to give the young, new wide receivers. Tip number one, work on your footwork, ladders, jump ropes. Uh, I didn't know it growing up. I played a lot of four square, hopscotch, mm -hmm. jump rope, double dutch. Uh, now they got ladders and all that type of stuff. So if you want to be a receiver, you've got to have good feet. Don't get caught up in this theory that you got to be a 4-4 four, four guy. You don't. You don't. 
You can be a four six five guy, but you got to have quick feet and good feet. All right, so that's number one. Number two, it don't matter how quick or fast you is. If you can't catch, it don't matter. So play catch a lot. Don't wait till the football season to try to work on your hands. It's too late. Right. If you got a little brother that play baseball, go get a spare glove and play catch with him. Because you catch with your eyes more than you catch with your hands. Mm-hmm. So once you train your eye-hand coordination more, you'll catch better. So get your footwork right. Train your eye-hand coordination. Play catch with baseball. Play catch with tennis balls. Uh, play ping pong. If you play baseball, look in that ball in. If you're a catcher a lot of times, look in that ball in. So just work on that. And lastly, I'll say, a lot of people won't say this, your cardio got to be top shape. Mm. Work on that condition, especially if you're playing for a receiver coach like me because I'm going to demand you to be better without the ball than you are with the ball. So All we right. block it. If that corner taking a touchdown saver angle, guess what my receiver better be? Right there running across the field to spring whoever we got running the ball to get in the end zone. So if you want to be a receiver, you got to be able to run all day. Because guess what that DB going to be able to do? Run all day. Right. And guess who going to make the play in the fourth quarter if, if, if the playing field and the talent is even? The kid that's in better shape. A lot of times the kid that's in better shape is more disciplined and more mentally tough. You know what they say. The team makes the coward of us all. All of us. So to Kamitra, to answer your question, I would say them three things. Work on your footwork. Get you a ladder. Get you a jump rope. Work on your eye-hand coordination. Play catch with a football. Play catch with a basketball. Play catch with a baseball. Play ping pong. Um, and lastly, run. Run. Go run them heels. Go jogging. Um, go to the field and just run 20, 20 sprints, 20 hundreds. Do whatever you got to do to be in a tip-top shape because you want to be able to run. You also don't want to be that guy, I got a short pass, I made somebody miss, and I gas out at the third. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you don't get them opportunities in football a lot to get a long a catch and a long run for a touchdown. Right. And you got to be able to block. What if it's a game where we ain't throwing? It's raining. You got to take them gloves off, snatch up. You got to go into a different mode. Right. And a lot of kids ain't ready to block for four quarters because they're in condition. Their mind ain't conditioned for it. Their body ain't conditioned for it. So I would say them three things. Work on your footwork. Work on your eye-hand coordination. And then tip-top shape. And everything else to take care of yourself. Yeah, I mean- Everything else to take care of yourself. And conditioning. All right, here we go. We're going to our next segment, our overtime segment. Got a question for you, L. Mm-hmm. Take a little time to think about it. This year, five weeks. Every week, I'm going to have a different question. Five weeks. Who is the best football player you've seen this year in person? The best football player this year I've seen in person. Me, before you go, give me two or three. Okay. Give me um, two or three. They're not in this order. Yeah, bro. no order. Just coming to We old. They just come in our brand, right. bro. You know what I mean? Just give me two, three. I really Nino, come Nino to Hill. Nino Hill. Shout out Nino Hill. Cam McKinley running back. Yep. Um, he 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 had changed the ball game. Mm-hmm. We seen it. Yep. And then just last week. Seen it again. We seen it again. So just and then even talking to their quarterback, he'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Twelve to one. Mm-hmm. Twelve to one that get everybody going. Mm-hmm. And everything going. He goes. Does he go? We go. They go. So, Nino Hill. Um, Shout out Nino Hill, Junior Tailback, Cam McKinley, baby. Um, number two. Well, not number two, just number two in your in your head. Uh, I'm gonna go with number nine. Dante McCullough. No, no, number nine from Fitch. Papa Deshaun Vaughn Jr., Junior, Fitch. senior quarterback from Fitch, Deshaun um, Vaughn Jr., aka Pop. Yeah, I, I just a game against Iggy, double overtime. And uh, he 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 took he controlled the whole game. Mm-hmm. Like I said, they needed third and four to get five. Gotcha. They needed he was just controlling the game, and he knew it was a big game, but he didn't let his emotion oversee the moment until he scored that last touchdown. When it was over, when he scored that last touchdown, you could tell you could tell he had been waiting two years. Right. So, Number nine, and then the way the way these guys play for him, you know, around that program, true leader. Um, the way they talk about him, the teammates, you know, not him talking about him, but the teammates. teammates, the way they talk about him, the way his coaches staff talk about him. Number nine, sure. So Deshaun Vaughn Jr., that's two. Give me um, one more, bro. Seen in person. Um, um, you know what? Give it to me. I have to tell you. Give it to me. 
Shout out to my boy, Cabron Smith out there. Cabron Farrell. Smith, Farrell. Hey, he lighting things up. Cabron right. Smith, senior right. quarterback, Farrell. He just he just um moved into the second all time as the second all time passing leader. Ooh, that's big. Mission. That's big. You know so shout out to Cabron. Shout out, baby. That's shout big time. To, uh, Keep doing your thing. Geese, because uh, and just like I said, once again. That command and control, right? And you know, and like I said, I, I hate to leave out uh, like a Lynch from Ursuline, mm-hmm. bad boy. You know what I'm right. saying? But like, you know, I, and we ain't saying them players ain't good players, right? And a lot yeah. of times it might not have been that night when we were at that game. And yeah, so and, that's and, why I'm and, saying and, that you have seen it first, and it's right. only it's, we only through week five. Week five, and, so. and then you know they they so loaded over there. I know, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? I know, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's so so. Sometimes where it depends on what game you catch, some of those great players might be a, a decoy, a candle light, and right. like yep. they might not shine the day you caught them. You know what I'm saying? But it, they, that don't matter. But for those three guys, I would have to say, you know, here, Deshaun Vaughn, and um, Cabron Smith. Cabron Smith. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm gonna give you three, bro. I'm gonna go in order. Number three, I'm gonna go Dante McClellan. Junior athlete, K. McKinley, number nine. Mm-hmm. Anytime you see a kid 6'3", 6'4", 215, he playing in the slot on offense, he catching short balls, running with it after the catch, he catching deep posts, then he go defense, he playing outside backer, he could rush. Uh, the game we was at Harding, I could probably count on one hand how many times they ran to the side. So he won the corner, but from his position, he shut down one whole side. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just something about a baller, a gamer. You can smell it. Like we talked about with Deshaun, me and no here, when I'm, you can just smell a gamer and a baller. So that's my number three. And I'm not saying all these other players are better. I'm just saying from what I've seen, up close and personal, so far. All right, number three. Number two, I'm going to go Deshaun Bond Jr. You know that's my guy. Everybody that know me right, know I love right, Deshaun. Right, right. I've been saying I think pound for pound he's the best football player we got in Trimble Holy County. That's just that's just what I feel from how I see the game, how I feel the game, how I smell the game. I just think he's that dude. Like we talk about him a lot. Um, I mean we can't say more than we said about him on this show. You know right, what I mean? Right, so right. number one, I'm gonna surprise you. The number one player I've seen so far this year, and it, it's kind of not fair because I done seen him two, three times. Jack the General, Jack Erickson, quarterback at Urshman. Talent-wise, there's a lot of kids you can put before him. But when you play the quarterback position, your job is to take what coach puts on the board and what is live on grass, make good decisions, and make this thing go. We all talk about D.C. Farrell, Christian Lynch, Devontae Taylor, Tyron uh, Davis, Jaquise Liaison. Hey, man. If you ain't got a quarterback to know when to throw it to you, when not to throw it to you, not to force it, and can make a play, get out of a sack, make a throw. I'm not saying he's more talented than them guys. I'm just saying right now at this point, he's probably playing the best football any kid I've seen in person right now. So that's a shout-out. So that's my three right now. I could have went five. I could have went ten. That's a lot of things. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just saying up to this point. And, again, like you said, sometimes that candle don't shine bright. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's – it's for you to shine. I got to be a decoy. Sometimes the other team is taking me out, so my brother's got to go eat. Right, right. So it's only we only five games in, five weeks in, and every week in this overtime segment, I'm going to have a little question for you, bro. We're just going to chop it up and yeah. go from there. So that's my bro. Three, that's my three. All right. Next segment, baby, we're going to our shout-outs. Shout-outs, baby. Before I get started, L, you got any shout-outs, any coaches, players, right. any towns, anybody you want to shout anybody out, baby? I'm going to shout-out the home team. Shout out to my guys, the Raiders. You know what I mean? Shout out to the fam. Keep grinding. Uh, always, always, always. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely want to shout out the staff at uh, Massman. Mm-hmm. You know, Coach Moore and, and even also the uh, you know the people who got us together for the media pass and everything. Just being, you know, so they, they, they handled us well in that type of environment. Right. All those chaos. In. Yeah, so um, shout out to them. Um, and uh, us being able to, uh, you know, what I'm saying partake in that type right. of atmosphere. You know, what I'm saying shout out to, shout out, like I said, shout out to all my family. Right. Um, shout out to Casey. Shout out to Kamitri. Right. Shout, shout out to Kamitri. Yep. Yeah, see you in a minute. And um, 
Shout out y'all because, um, you know, when we first started this, we, we had way through the regular season. And, uh, you know, when I, we, we first spoke right. about doing this, you know right. what I'm saying? It was just, we know, halfway through now, bro. Yeah, it was one of those, hey, what you think about? It? Right. And we halfway through it. Um, shout out Phillip Care Training. Shout out my know, brother. Shout out Phillip Care Training, my man, Mike Phillips. You know what I'm saying? That's the... Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's our logic explainer. Right. You, know what I'm saying? you know what I'm saying? That's right. our logic explainer. We tap in. Yep. You know, he keep us right, keep our body right, he keep us, keep us, you know, our heads right. So shout out to my guy. You know what I'm saying? And then, like I said, shout out to the team, man. You know it. You know it. I'm going to piggyback off that. You know, always first shout out to the team. We said it earlier. Shout out to Don C. Couldn't be here tonight. He got to handle some business. That's the guy. That's the point guard. Shout out Don C. Shout out L, my brother, owner. Of, uh, interviews media, he letting us shine, letting us have fun, giving us a platform to do what we like to do. So shout out to my brother. Shout out Slim Thugger over there on the ones and twos doing this thing. We've been getting a lot of compliments about our audio and video and all the bells and whistles. That's Slim Thugger, y'all. That's Slim Thugger. Um, Will got him on IG, baby. Go follow him. Go show him some love. I'll add him. A um, couple more shout outs. I want to shout out the Glenville Tar Brothers. They got on that plane and went and played IMG. A lot of teams won't go down there and play IMG. Right. They lost 28 to 6. But I guarantee you people probably thought they was going to lose 50 to 6. And if you read the comments from the, um, the IMG coaching staff and players, they got a lot of respect for the Glenville Tar Brothers. So shout out to Coach Gannon and your program and your players for taking that trip and um, having the competitiveness and the gusto, the ambition to be great to go get on that plane and go take on that game. Right. And another thing is shout out to Coach Gannon. I'm going to say this again. Shout out to Coach Ginn. Um, coach Ginn is an inner city black African-American coach who doesn't base his impact off wins and losses. Right. He doesn't. Right. You know what I mean? For him to take kids from the inner city of Cleveland, put them on the plane, take them to Florida, go play IMG. I'm sure they got to see a lot of sights and sounds and see stuff that's different from the inner city of Cleveland, from the east side of Absolutely. Cleveland. You Absolutely. know what I mean? And people don't understand that. And even them kids that he's loving on every day don't understand it. But when they become grown and start having their own families, I know they love and appreciate it, but that love and appreciation will go through the roof. So shout out Coach Ian, man. You got a fan of me from afar. I know you don't know me, baby. But I respect you. My respect level for you is through the roof. So what you're doing for them kids in that program, man, is big time. Um, another shout out I want to give is to uh, the 1997-1998 Kent McKinley back-to-back -back state championship team. They were honored at the game this weekend. So mm -hmm. everybody know I love Coach McD. Coach McD was the coach there. So I got to shout him out for that. And the Kevin McKinley program, the Coach Hall, been great to us since yeah, we started absolutely. doing this. So absolutely. shout out to them, man. And my last shout out, baby, two more shout outs. I got the shirt on. Shout out how the basketball, baby, is almost that season. Can't wait to be back in the gym getting on y'all butt. You better be <laughs> ready to work. But my last shout out is to my five kids, my granddaughter, um, all the kids in Warren um, who look at me as a mentor, coach, OG. Like I hear all type of titles they call me. Um, shout out to them, my kids at Summit Academy, my kids at Highland I coach, kids at Liberty I used to coach, kids at JFK I used to coach, all my babies at Harding I used to coach. Y'all make me better. You know what I mean? Right, right. They don't know. I got to be a better man every day because they look it. I'm not perfect, so don't be tripping out there. I don't need nobody in the comments hating. I'm not saying I'm perfect at all by far, but my love for them kids is perfect. Right. right. And that's going to always be perfect. So a lot of times, you know, we grown, and we always giving them advice or loving on the kids. A lot of times kids don't know what they're doing for their dogs. So shout out all my babies, baby. I love you. We about to get up out of here. Thank you to my brother again. Appreciate you joining me. It was Man. fun, baby. Oh, yes, sir. You yes, know sir. it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this is our recap, our week five recap. Be looking out for our uh, player of the week. I'm sorry, our Buena Vista game of the week interviews coming up. Them should be dropping tomorrow. Be ready to see them. And one more shout out. I almost forgot. Shout out to Mike McGlynn, the big dog. Be looking out for that. We got a Legends Edition coming. And be ready for looking for that. And again, shout out to everybody that gave us any compliments. Um, we've been getting a lot of compliments, man. We're trying to learn on the fly. We hope y'all like it. Oh, we yeah. love it. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up, man. Shout out to the, uh, to everybody who watched the show. 
support the show, support us on social media. Right. Um, we do, we do uh, appreciate it, um, and it, it definitely fuels us to keep on going because when you get tired, you get on at each other's right. neck. But if we make it all work, it when somebody sees in the community and they tell us they appreciate what we're doing or not, so much appreciate it, but they enjoy it. Right. They enjoy it. Right. So, Man, shout out to everybody who, who let us stay here and let us stay time. Yep. You know what I'm saying? To make what we do work it. Because, you know, we have fun doing it. So, our, our, our goal is to make sure that, or hopefully, that y'all enjoy it. Do people it. enjoy it? We love it, baby. If you like it, I love it. If you enjoy it, I love it, baby. So, we gave all our shout outs. We appreciate it. That's our week five recap between the lines with Coach Stella, baby. We're here. Keep supporting. Like, share, subscribe. You got the ball. Kobe, we out.